I need to take off my pants. Holy sh! It's so warm here. <laughs> I'm also pantsless. <laughs> I actually have pants on today, but that's that's not the norm. <laughs> All right, hello there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ajmoha, and I'm the Viper. I'm Tinadi. And this is episode 18 of the Town Center, your podcast dedicated to all things Age of Empires. In today's show, in just a couple of days, we'll finally have the complete roster of players that will be participating in the Red Bull Wololo El Reinado as the last chance qualifier is set to finish this coming Sunday. Then we'll bring you up to speed on the recently announced tournaments, that's T90's Regicide Rumble and the World Desert Championship 2, and we'll use the latter as a launch ramp for a broader discussion on the pros and cons of open streaming versus closed streaming. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. If we enjoy the show, we would very much appreciate it if you would like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That's the only way you can ensure we can keep bringing you guys these podcasts. You can also listen to our show on Spotify, and if you do, don't forget to rate us five stars. But today is a big day. We're welcoming back our good friend, the <gasps> diaper. Uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, don't, don't know what going close on. enough that's what it feels uh, like anyway the, the viper <laughs> uh, no not quite not not quite i'm so sorry i'm so sorry man. Uh, the viper nice to have you back how's your sleep going bro thank you um it's going well within all reason um i do miss sleeping more than three hours in a row three but, hours uh, that's pretty good yeah i mean like, some nights i get three hours and then the issue is like he always wakes up and then i have to take care of him and then it's like getting back to sleep again after that it's hard so yeah, I would say averaging right now, maybe four or five hours. I, I missed uh, like eight hours of beauty sleep, man. Eight hours of sleep. When was the last time I got eight hours of sleep? I, I can't even tell. Uh, Wait, this is going to last that long? <laughs> 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 Bro. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, okay, I first wanna... months okay, but now you're. How long? How old are your children? They're six. Um, yeah, they oh. have trouble sleeping though. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're t they're twins though. I think things are different. When they're okay, twins. okay, fair. Uh, I think so. May I ask, does uh, does Debbie breastfeed? Because if she breastfeeds, it's so much easier. She does, but he has issues with spitting a fair bit. So it's like, um, uh, even though. He drinks and falls asleep. He will still wake up and spit. And then it's like we have to clean up. And then, you know, it's just like a bit of a vicious cycle. Um, <laughs> that's also why, like, because we have to have him on up upwards to decrease the chance of him spitting right after right, eating, right, right. whether it's bottle or breastfeeding. Uh, so it's, it's a bit exhausting sometimes. But um, he has done actually the last like 36 hours. He has done significantly better. So I'm just praying that this will keep up. How old is he now? Like one month, two months? What is it? Five like? weeks. On Monday, he becomes six weeks old. Beautiful. Tristan was just telling me before we started recording that he struggles to wake up before 9 a.m. <laughs> 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 and I still get a really solid eight and a half hours. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream, indeed. Hey, listen, before we started recording, I was actually watching that video from Spirit of the Law. Did you guys watch it? He just released it today, I think. Mm -mm. So it's titled Top 10 Worst Cav Sivs. Can you guys guess what's the number one? So is it If Javadians is number one, I'm unsubscribing. Well, uh, I'm very happy to report to you Oof. that they are indeed number one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 Unsubbed. How are they? I mean, I guess they have no like their... Their cavalry ignores armor when they attack. That's insane. Cavalry? Does he include? Yeah. Did he include like elephant archers in that? Because if if elephant archers are included in that, no. Uh, okay, true. That's actually a very good question. No, I think it was only stable. He only considered uh. stable and like economy bonuses and stuff like that. Yeah, but you have bad so, elephants and light <laughs> that ignore listen, armor on listen, attack. Listen, bro. Come on. Okay. okay, they don't survive very long. But I they get do it. Damage. When you pick your videos for like hybrid maps or even how you play them for a standard 1v1 is fine. But don't start acting like their stable's insane. My <laughs> point is they're not the worst stable, okay? Okay, uh, who's worse? To, uh, to make matters worse. Can I bring up a sim list? <laughs> <laughs> to make matters worse, you know what were place two? What were the sims on place two? Ooh, Mayans, place two. eagles, and Inca. So he considers Mayans. The Venus were were worse than those okay that he's trolling <laughs> then that's troll yeah no yeah. because he said that like the slaughter warriors or whatever you call those things yeah uh, that those guys are actually good. Stable. they they can't mines can't even in get mega stable. random mega random you can tear in theory you can start with the stable uh, right i don't even know if you would have access to the to them though no they're still worse you don't have armor upgrades only have attack they're upgrades. so bad what? yeah I don't think not, not as best work will be way better spirit does great work but if that's actually the list i haven't seen it 
That's that's not his best hey, work. Listen. It must have been a slow day at the office, you know. <laughs> listen, don't say too many negative things because we're actually about to have Spirit on the Law on the show. A little bit of a... Uh, oh, I'm going to note this. This is going to be a topic. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a topic yeah, of the show. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. I think he said that it would be nice if the Slaughter Warriors were affected by the infantry armor. I agree. it has been a suggestion. I would be like... Well. A, I, I mean, mean like it's everything. just adding to a very rare situation. I don't yeah. think it's a game changer at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, in the rare instance that you start with a stable as Mayans, then I'm, I guess that would be pretty nice. Yeah. Hey, li listen, I'm, I'm thinking about content. What should we call this in the timestamp? Viper thing, Spirit of the Lost sucks. That going to be the timestamp for this part of you the conversation? You should put that on the thumbnail. On the uh, okay, on the thumbnail. Yeah. Let's do it. Viper <laughs> thinks Spear of the Lost. You guys are just the worst. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I play, actually play hate with that fire so much. Here. <laughs> I, I hate that. I hate that so much. Uh, I know right. Masmora is all about the drama. Yeah, it's all about Mishmora. the drama. Yeah, you're not calling me Masmora. Oh, yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, Masmora, no? Yeah. All right. Do are you presented on YouTube as? Nelson, when we are having the show, the I, I was I was wondering all the time if it just uh, you know my brother he uses to watch my uh, our show from time to time. He always asks me, mm -hmm. "Why do you guys call yourself by stupid nicknames?" And I'm like, "I don't <laughs> f know, bro. <laughs> I know all your names. You're Tristan. You're Orion. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know, but I guess just the way." What's it, your name? Uh, huh? So funny. Hey, you know, your dad brain might be actually playing tricks on you. So that's actually a good that's question. <laughs> but, I mean, it's one of those things that where, like, you get used, you get, know, you get to know the person through their nickname, right? When I met Jordan, da I mean, you see what I'm calling them, Jordan Doubt. Mm. When I met them in person, it, would, it was weird to call Jordan it Marco. Yeah, it's Or Doubt yeah. Darko, right? It's, it rhymes, but it's like, it, it doesn't feel right. Is they're Jordan's, Doubt and they're Jordan. Jordan's is especially weird, though, because Jordan is the first name. It's not like a yeah. it's not like an online gamer tag. Like uh, everyone yeah, just true. assumes that that's his first name. Well, um, in this case, it's not a first name, is it? Michael Jordan? Doesn't well, it come from Michael Jordan? Uh, it it is, did uh, come from. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, first name, last name. It <laughs> uh, alternative facts from Tristan here. All right, my friends, how about we focus a little bit on Age of Empires 2? Let's talk about the last chance qualifier. And just to get our viewers up to speed, by the time you're listening to this, it'll be tomorrow and the day after, so Saturday and Sunday. Oh, but it's the tomorrow last... already. Well, by the time you're listening to this, Oh, because this is uploading tomorrow. Yes. Ah, 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 what, I see. Dad brain. Dad brain. <laughs> just right there. Yeah. Dad brain. So I don't even know where it was. So, yeah. So Saturday and Sunday, uh, the last two spots for the Red Bull main event will finally be awarded. We have eight players left, and they're basically split, uh, splitting into like two different brackets. So whoever wins their respective bracket makes it to Spain. Uh, in one of the brackets, we have Yo versus Mihai and Doubt versus ACCM. And in the other one, we have Venture versus Barlds and Heart versus Classic Pro. All these games I just mentioned will be played on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll have both finals. We here at the Town Center podcast obviously are rooting first and foremost for Doubt. At least I am. I don't know about Viper. Uh, this is a Gamer Legion podcast after all. So, Oregon, has there been like a concerted effort to try to help Doubt? You know, has the team been behind them practicing and all those things? Now you know that Red Bull tends to ask, are you bringing anyone to the event? I have asked if I can bring Doubt as my plus one. So that's my support. That's how much you're, uh, how confident you are. But uh, in general, like, no, I mean, I've been busy. I've been offering to be like sitting in on some sessions to give feedback and such, but he hasn't uh, taken me up, up on that. Uh, I think he's training mostly with uh, Hera, with uh, ACC. He actually was training a bit with ACCM and now Ooh. they're facing, right? Because okay. the brackets change after, well, we had an incident with Sitol. So brackets changed. Um, oh, and true. now suddenly doubt is facing probably the guy he trained the most with. So um, that's crazy. Yeah, talk, no. talk about the CTO situation. I followed it a little bit, but I'm not. I yeah. just forgot what was it. Uh, apparently, had something in real life that he was dealing with uh, that was apparently stupid as well. So it was a silly way to not sign up or check in. So for those that who don't know, like these qualifiers tend to have a check in system as well. First, you have to sign up for the tournament, and then like two within two hours before the tournament start or so, you have to like check in to confirm I'm ready to play. This is to avoid that a lot of players have no uh, show for opponents, right? So it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, Sito apparently missed the check in and. Check-ins are brutal, man. We had the same Hera with the, I did the Open Classic a few years ago. Yeah. Hera missed the check-in and he was not allowed to play. I don't the, I don't like the check-in system personally. I mean, it's happened at this point, but uh, I feel like a couple days before, players are, should be locked, given their times to show up, that we shouldn't miss out on, on big players playing. But that affected Doubt's training. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's crazy. But it, it's like one of those where, imagine the amount of work if you have to like filter through everyone that doesn't show up. And the amount of messages you're going to get 
for all the ad movements that are going to happen yeah. when people yeah. don't yeah. check in, right? It's fair. Yeah, there's there are just, pros and cons to yeah, everything. Yeah, right? it's, the whole thing. Yeah, it's just, very sad to have Sitar, who has like, honestly had decent chances to qualify as well, right? Yep. So, yep. and that he's an aspiring pro trying to make a living and make a name for himself in Age of Empires. So. It really hurts. Uh, yeah. Did the incident have anything to do with like blocking himself, locking himself up in a room and having to pee through a window? Does anybody know that? <laughs> no. I'm not sure. I don't think it was that bad, but apparently it was pretty silly. Uh, but I do wonder if he wasn't able to check in. It wasn't because he forgot about it, right? It was just because he wasn't there, as far as I understood. Would he be able to participate? Because if he I wasn't mean, at home anyway. If he wasn't at home, no, he came home in time, right? Like be right as the tournament began. So it oh, okay. was just a little bit late. He could have messaged the admin and been like, hey, I'm not able to check in right now, but I'm on the way. And then Krajini could have, or that was what Krajini said, he could have arranged it, right, checked him in for him. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess he got caught up in the moment in real life with whatever he was doing and just it simply escaped his mind. But it's weird because it's what he's been training for for weeks already, right? So hmm. yeah, that fucking sucks, bro. Uh, did you did you actually watch the podcast? I just remember, sorry, a little bit of an off topic. Did you watch the podcast uh, while we were gone? I've had a lot of time to sit with a baby in my hands, so yes, so, I have okay, watched the so podcast. At least you're a good colleague. You're a horrible teammate yes. to doubt, but at least you're a good colleague. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so how do you rate his chances, though, Viper? Uh, have you heard something from Hera? Is he doing well um, in practice? He's doing amazing in the last chance qualifier. He's done really well. Yeah, he's been playing really well so far. It's kind of the main games I've been like when I was trying to watch a bit of the games. Doubt was the one I was following. I mean, he went 3-0 against Nico, for example. 3-1 against Ganji, although some of the games against Ganji looked a bit dicey, I would say. <laughs> it's spicy, yeah. Yeah, but um, no, I think his chances are decent. I think ACCM might honestly be his toughest opponent right now. I think if he beats ACCM, he's going to have really good chances against both Mihai or Yo. So yeah, I think if Doubt wins against ACCM, I would say he's the favorite, favorite in the next match. Interesting. Okay, Tristan? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm a little surprised to hear that, that Viper thinks Doubt is the favorite if he were to be up against, <laughs> like, Yo, for example, or if Mihai were to beat Yo, I'm a, I'm a little surprised that Viper said that so um so easily. I He's suppose. a Red Bull champion, man. Uh, <laughs> Have you not heard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear it every time down. Oh, Mister Yo but, too. Uh, though. <laughs> but uh, I think it'd be a really competitive bracket, uh, as well all these brackets. Uh, it's going to be really tough. Um, like like I could easily see Mihai beating Yo. I'm not saying that that's necessarily yeah. my expectation, really? but Mihai is playing insane, and I I really feel. Um, he and Sebastian uh, coming into the whole, you know, Red Bull qualification event. I was just like, this Empire War suits them perfectly. They're both in amazing shape. They're young. They're talented. They're motivated. So, um, yeah, that'll be it'll be really interesting. Also, I find it interesting. Um, it is a best of five as well, which in really close sets could come down to you know one one big moment in a key game, game five, something like that. Uh, whereas, like, obviously, uh, once we get into the the deciders, then it's a best of seven, and then there's a little bit more extra flexibility, I guess, for players. Mm -hmm. Well, how about we talk about statistics, my friend? I got the statistics. I got them numbers. So, Doubt's head-to-head -head record against ACCM, 18 wins, 10 losses, my friends. It's actually looking pretty good. Of course, this is... In fairness, ACCM's rise to the top came the last three years. I'm sure Doubt and ACCM played playing against before ACCM was as good as, good as he is right. now. Both of them have been around forever, yeah. that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, if you're talking about Yo versus Mihai, Yo is a huge favorite. Well, I actually wrote it down somewhere. There it is. So he's 0-3 against Yo. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but Mihai, again, one of the guys that's starting only recently to become really good. But it's right? random map, right? Those random stats Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So Empire Wars is a different ball game, And I mean, yeah. Mihai beat Kapoch 3-1. Kapoch has been to every Red Bull LAN event so far. Ooh, so, I mean, that's a statement in itself. Kapoch is very good at uh, Empire Wars. So, I mean, Mihai Yo probably could go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, then if you have Doubt versus Yo, <laughs> not looking particularly good. So Mr. Yo won 15 series and lost six. But again, this is everything combined. So random map and Empire Wars. If you broke it down, if you break it down to Empire Wars, we got it's 50-50. So it's one win for a doubt. It's uh, the world was famous the win, Red Bull 3 indeed, and one loss <laughs> in Red Bull 4. I actually agree with you, Viper, that I think Doubt has incredibly good chances against CO because I think Doubt is the kind of guy that he's just so frustrated, just frustrates him so much when he prepares really deeply. He's got a strategy, he's got a plan. 
And then it all starts to crumble just because he meets one of those guys that it's so fast that he can like kill five mm -hmm. mangonels with one mangonel. So, you know, <laughs> I feel like Doubt gets incredibly frustrated when something like that happens. And I wouldn't expect Mr. Yo to be one of those guys that is going to be microing two archers against yeah. him or something like that. So I actually do agree. Yeah, yeah Yo against Doubt is stra strategic uh, war, right? It's pure age but, of so, empires. To interject yeah. here, sorry to the micro nerd, it's pure age of empires. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, would you then say that it's better for Doubt to face Yo rather than Mihai? Because Mia is one of those faster micro nerds. I agree, but I still think uh, I, I still think that Empire Wars is so different. That would be my guess. I don't know how much experience yeah. Mihai. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of experience in random map, let alone Empire Wars. So I mm. still would think that Empire Wars being somewhat new, that Doubt has got the strategic advantage here at least. What do you think, Tristan? Yeah. I, Yo is insane with strategy. The longer the game goes, the better it is for Yo. Like I think for Doubt, it's it's the strategy and the initial implementation of it at at like certain times early cast age early imp those are going to be doubts moments um but i think like if those moments even out uh because i expect doubt to be trying to force the issue using the market to get slightly better times i think that's where where yo will ultimately win um and i think if my worry for doubt is is like in a best of five i could see him beating yo in a best of seven like how many of those drafts is he going to have where he can get that that elite timing or that that tricky matchup. I feel like Doubt tends to rely on those a little bit. Um, so that's why if I had to say, if it is like Yo and Doubt best of seven, I would probably say something like Yo 4-2 or Yo 4-3 mm -hmm. right now. Blasphemy, bro. Blasphemy. <laughs> so uh, sorry, GL. <laughs> uh, Orion, listen up. Because Doubt, he prides himself on being incredibly good with the drafting and all of those things. How do you feel like Yo does in terms of drafting? Is he like one of his strengths as well or not really? The thing with Yo is why drafting isn't as important in that regard is because Yo picks sieves that others don't pick as well. So Yo's draft is always weird no matter what, right? While if you play against most other top players, usually you're both aiming for the same sieves. But you play against Yo, and he will like third pick Celts. And it's like, okay, so I have another free sieve. So um, <laughs> drafting against Yo is a little bit different in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think in these all these sets, draft the draft is going to be incredibly important as well. And I think that's also where Doubt gets another few percentages, uh, better winning chances. Agree. I, I think I think he's got good chances. I vote my prediction is Doubt. When Doubt makes it. I assume Viper agrees. He has to beat ACCM first. He has to beat ACCM uh, first, uh, which ACM is not is easy. No, not easy. Yeah. And it's just recently joined my insanity as well. So are you mm. going with Yo qualifying, Tristan? Is that your final prediction? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, dude. It's tough. Um, but I think you guys are, accept are acknowledging it's also tough as well, even though you're leaning towards Doubt. So I'm going to lean towards Yo. Um, he was super close to getting into the ladder for a reason. He's played a lot of games. And he's got a really good record against everyone that he's playing up against. Could potentially play up against so i gotta go with yo mr yo is incorrect no no sorry wrong video uh let's go uh, other bracket we have venturester versus barrels and we have pretty much a very a huge advantage here for vinch in terms of the statistics so he's got seven wins one loss although again just uh have a little bit of a silver lining here the recent results they met three times this year actually venturester wins four three in the shenai shia cup by the way, Orient, you made fun of my Shenai Shia pronunciation. This is how you do it, just so you know. Uh, Barls wins 4-1 in the World Wars 3 qualifier. So 50-50. And then there's a sudden disaster matchup, which I don't think we should be including here, which Vigister ends up winning. Uh, what do you see happening there, Tristan? It's a really interesting one. So I am constantly speaking to a lot of players. Um, like, I would say, like, I interact more with players from like let's say rank like 12 to 30 than i do like the top 10 these days because the top 10 mm -hmm. are always busy having kids doing all that stuff and um <laughs> so a lot of people have a ton of faith in barrels man it's like anytime i talk to anyone even in like the earlier stages everyone's just like man like barrels um i still do worry for barrels that vinchester's aggression and his his micro is just going to get the best of him um, but Barles has shown for me that he can, on his day, deliver the same type of micro as some of these other guys. I think for Barles, it's like, overall, very consistent player. However, it's hard for him to be to be consistent with the micro aspect. So um, I'm going to lean towards Vinch here in that series. Uh, and I also think, uh, probably skipping too far ahead here, the next series as well, uh, I got to have to lean towards Hart because Classic Pro... 
Unfortunately, I feel like he's the same type of player Hart is, just maybe a step down mm -hmm. from uh, Mr. We'll, Hart. We'll get there. Let me hear an audience prediction first. I mean, I, I'm looking at the brackets. I saw Winchester play against uh, Shiskan, who is now known as Hamster. Hamster yeah. Close. Yeah. Um, Got spicy too, that one. And he was down 2-1, actually, in that yep. set. Yeah. Yep. So Winchester was, was li uh, in, in a little bit of trouble there. But uh, yeah, Winchester, I mean, his preparation is always good. So I imagine he's going to be well prepared. But so is Boros, right? Boros is also a st strategic player. He can also do some uh, good drafts. Mm -hmm. um, I think Winchester is a slight favorite, but honestly... If Barles goes like wins three zero, I would also not be surprised. It's mm -hmm. it's that type of game. Close to fifty fifty. I agree. It's funny because both players actually made it to Red Bull five, mm -hmm. uh, but none of them made it to Red Bull six. Venturser would have made it to Red Bull six, but he had like visa problems, if I remember correctly, uh, which is a bit of a shame, of course. But yeah, I agree. I think fifty fifty. For me, it always depends what Barles is going to show up. Barles can be such a solid player sometimes, and then so unpredictable other times. So yeah, then let's go to the other matchup that Tristan was just talking about, Hard versus Classic Pro. Honestly, I know very little about Classic Pro. Uh, I know he's Ukrainian, and by the way, I can't even imagine how can he actually compete being a Ukrainian and everything else that's happening. So huge respect, uh, first of all. You do talk with these people, uh, Tristan, so talk about the matchup. You just said you think Hard's well, going mean, but... You know, the way I describe Classic Pro is um, he... he it's actually a very fitting name like he he is like your standard pro like if you were to describe everything that that someone would do that's kind of what classic pro does and that's uh what uh certain players do as well like obviously with Dow <clears throat> or or yo we talked about some interesting quirks earlier or borrows how he can be maybe be a little bit more strategic but the micro's not there classic pros like strategy isn't ridiculous but it's solid his micro is fantastic his his uh, his thinking is always aggression first um, but again, I, I feel as though the issue here is Hart is kind of the same way. Like I've never looked at Hart as a player who is insane strategically, but his gameplay is just so, so good. And, um, you know, if your strategy isn't right, if you don't have like maybe a matchup or something, usually you're going to struggle. And so, um, you know, Hart is just the same type of player I would say is classic pro, but seems to be a slight step up. Um, so as I'm hoping for a competitive best of five there, I, I could easily see Hart, at least if if things play out the way I think they do, like maybe like a 3-0 there, honestly. So um, I think Classic Pro is uh, like a little bit of a mini Leary in many ways. He's a bit timing oriented, heavy micro, uh, aggressive player. And I think that suits Empire Wars, which also Leary's results throughout Empire Wars has shown. Uh, he had a convincing 3-0 against Freaking Andy before facing now Hart. So Classic Pro seems to be playing well, and I don't think you can rule him out. But yeah, Hart should be favored. But you know, in a tournament situation or a qualifier like this with so much on, on the line, those aggressive playstyles can usually, or quite often, uh, it, they, they can deal more damage than they would normally mm -hmm. do, to put it in that way. And yeah, Hart, again, a little bit more macro-oriented, but also an aggressive player. So the question is, in my mind, who's going to get the, the timing and be able to carry that through? Mm -hmm. I still think Hart is favorite. But again, this is one of those matches where, like, if Classic Pro comes out of that as a victor, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Just imagine, just imagine if he wins and gets to the final and gets so close, man, would that be crazy for him? I think they're very good friends, him and uh, Vinciusur, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, um, that would be even more. Are, aren't they all guaranteed fifteen hundred dollars already? All these eight players? Don't know about the money. I think so, Tristan. Um, like the winners I... get three thousand. Yeah, I can I can look real quick. Um, yeah, I was actually looking at Classic Pro's like career earnings and whatnot, and like even if he were to get fall into, uh, I think it, it's possible if he loses against Hart, this is his best cash in a tournament ever already. Oh wow! Well. Um, he, he has played for a very long time, has only eleven thousand in tournament winnings, so it would be fifteen hundred if if you lose, three thousand if you lose in the decider, and then of course if you make the main event, nine k minimum, and then all, all the rest yeah. to follow. So um. Yeah, this is big for Classic Pro. Mm -hmm. I think, I agree that Hart might be the favorite here, especially because he's now in a team. And he's, is he actually full-time or is he close to full-time? Does anybody know this? I would assume um, that he's been full-time for, for a while. I think, like, I, I, I don't think he's he's doing other things. I, I've never hear about that, so I imagine it's full-time. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know the level of uh, of hours Hart puts in, right? I think he's a very he's a bit streaky. Motivation can come and go throughout the months, which is, I think, normal for most people. Um, 
But yeah, I think it's his main priority right now. And like, if he's trying to make a push for this to be a consistent long term thing, I mean, this is this is it right here. This would be huge. Okay, um, but apart from all these players that we just talked about, or, or let, let me hear a name first. Yeah, who do you think is going to qualify on this bracket? I have Vinchester. Despite everything, I have Vinchester going. Especially because of how he did during the ladder and that last day, how many games he actually won and how close he was to actually pull the crazy upset. Who do you guys have? I'm going to say Barls. I'm gonna Champions say are made, not born. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he, he wore that shirt sometime, didn't he? Or what you have the for? Yeah, he he wore that to the one of the Red Bull lands, and then I believe he wore that on two mem events where the cam was on. So I think that's his. I think it's his tournament shirt right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think this says a lot about the bracket. I'm gonna go heart actually. Um, so I, I think it's it's a bit of a three sided coin, maybe four side if you if you really believe in classic pro, uh, which many should, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think Hart is like the latter aspect. I saw a lot of like, I guess, unfortunate circumstances. He's playing Byzantine mirrors uh, more than oh. some of the others. He played, <laughs> ran into MBL more than some of the others. Um, and it's just like, it didn't suit him at all. I think I think an actual draft and mixed maps suits him a lot. So I'm going to go with the Peruvian. Mm -hmm. uh, or everybody and their mother has given has got a ladder take. Uh, a take on the ladder system. I don't think mm -hmm. we have yours. Can you make it short, though? Um, I would have liked to take part in it. I think it's a fun concept. I think it would have been so much better if they had prize money for like the people below the qualifier spots, just to encourage more people to play. Um, yeah, it became a bit of a disaster the last two days for those that were trying to make the the, the final run in, right? Um, so yeah, the, it is a fun idea, and I like the idea, but. It needs to be executed better, and it needs to give incentive for people to continue playing to the end, whether you qualify or not. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can do that, I would, would not mind seeing more ladder qualifiers. So we're just copying our takes. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, you if, guys copied if mine. You, <laughs> if you had to take part in the whole ladder, would you have made it with a baby? I think so. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, it's obviously, uh, I would have had to play. I mean, I think I'd, I would have played a lot off stream then, mm -hmm. whenever like the time would have been there, and I, I think I play better off stream. So <laughs> I think uh, I think I, I, I'd back myself to have qualified if I had to through the the ladder. Um, yeah, uh, and I, like I said, I, it looked fun. I would have liked to play, although actually maybe after like the tenth Byzantine mirror, I would have, <laughs> maybe not. But uh, no, like for me, those things are fun. Where it's like an endless grind and multiple people are trying to make it. Uh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. By the way, Tristan, you said that Yo is going to qualify over Doubt, right? I I want to remind you that Doubt is a pretty big guy and he's probably going to be in Spain, bro. So just uh, just, just, <laughs> Dude, just, just so you know. <laughs> Listen, if I if I had a dollar for every time Doubt talked to me in person or over Discord about a take that I've had that has had him lose a series, I could host <laughs> a whole prize pool for an event tomorrow, right? Um, I I think in this case, Doubt should understand that that Yo's had a pretty good run against him, and he shouldn't tower over me and try and intimidate me. But uh, who knows, man? Who knows? Doubt's presence is menacing. When you look at the guy, he's so much taller than you expect him to be when you just see him on camera, right? <laughs> Every, such a big guy, I don't know. But then if you know him in person, you know what kind of goofball he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that all, is, the, is. all the intimidation is gone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. He's got, he's got the fire, he's got the competitive fire in him. It, it's interesting. I actually think because of all the memes and everything people talk about, the lightheartedness that people loved out for, people don't realize the reason he's still around is he's he's maybe one of the most competitive people in our game. Like he is super, like when it comes time to lock in, he locks in. And, uh, you know, he, can I tell a little story real quick? It just a minute. Uh, so sure. at NAC Viper, um, you were about to play Doubt, right? And mm -hmm. someone in the room asked me, um, like, what do you think about the situation here? And Doubt, I think, was on a bad run. You were, you're you, in good shape. And so I didn't know Doubt was going to be in the room, but I said the, the words, honestly, I think Doubt should go into it with like nothing to lose, stick to his strategy. If he beats Viper, he could be happy. And Doubt heard it because he was going to the kitchen and he goes, nothing to lose, nothing to lose. He's like, I'll show you nothing to lose. And then he left, right? Uh, and then later on that night, I think you you beat him, but <laughs> it was a close series. Oh. And later on mm -hmm. that night, Doubt explained to me, he's like, he's like, I'll tell you why I said that. He's like, I understand why people could look at results or like skill level difference, whatever. He's like, 
But my mindset, he's like, uh, is like when I go into a tournament series, he's like, I'm the best. This person is not as good as me. He's like, I'm gonna kill that mother effer and I'm gonna win this series. <laughs> and he was like so intense, and I was just like, Oh my god, this is why Doubt's still doing it right here, you know? It was super cool to see. It was really motivating actually to to cool. hear someone yeah. as as kind and thoughtful as Doubt say it just like that. Still have so much fire. That's, not, That's cool. Those two words you just used to describe doubt is not the words I often hear him describe <laughs> this. But uh, no, but like you have to have that kind of competitive fire in you to mm -hmm. to have as much success as he has, right? Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. So once more, tomorrow and the day after, uh, make sure to tune in to your favorite streamer. I'm sure everybody will be covering the games. But if you can't wait till October to get your fix of Professional Age of Empires 2, I have good news for you, my friends. The World Desert Championship 2 has been announced. This will be mostly a 3v3 tournament, and that's the only S-tier team game tournament of the year that we know of. It might be more, we don't know. And the main event will go from the 5th till the 29th of September, with the qualifiers starting in late August. The whole thing will be organized by Ornlu, Nacho, Hue Hue, Coyote, uh, Lord Petito, and it comes with a prize pool of $30,000 sponsored by Microsoft, Sean T, the Mad Catter, and I think he's also going to be responsible for like the map pack and all those things. By the way, we're going to have a map pack. It's something that I've been missing for a long time. And another sponsor is Vlodarshik. I'm sorry for all the butchering, but that's how it goes. So Tristan, excited for some team games? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 3v3s are really fun, uh, and we have to be We've just had less team game tournaments over the last few years in Age of Empires, so I feel like uh, maybe we have to be a little bit more choosy on what type of team game tournaments we can get. And if I had to choose, I'd probably go for 3v3. Uh, and I think it's it's really fun, especially if they get the oh. maps right. It's really cool to see uh, how different players can shine. To have two flanks and a standard map uh, is is just creates some really exciting moments, I feel. So uh, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, no, I, the, the first edition was very fun. Uh, I think we actually absolutely stomped the final, which was awesome. But uh, no, the, the maps were fun and interesting and challenging in many ways. And I think some of the maps will stay for this tournament as well, uh, probably with some new on top. And yeah, Hero 3 is, in my opinion, the best team game format above. I mean, like 2v2, I don't really consider team game in the same shape as 3v3 and 4v4. I feel like 3v3 and 4v4 are kind of their own thing. 2v2 is its own thing and 1v1 is its own thing. Uh, but yeah, if I had to choose 3v3 or 4v4, 3v3 is definitely the way to go. And I think it's also good because then teams with 4 can sign up and they can have a, uh, some rotation on maps. Or if a player cannot make it, it's easy, still easier to schedule. So there's a lot of positives with the 3v3. Yeah, first thing I want to say about this tournament is that I'm incredibly happy that someone like Oren Liu and Nacho are getting $30,000 for a prize pool. I don't know, usually when, when I hear $30,000, I mostly connect these sums with people like T90, with people like Nili. Even though these years, this time now, it's actually more. You guys usually get more than this. But still, $30,000 is a lot. I don't know how much of it is for Microsoft, of course, but I'm very happy that these guys are actually getting it. I think Nacho replied to one comment of, I think it was uh, two episodes ago, that he was having such a hard time actually getting sponsorship from Microsoft, which I find mind boggling. This guy has got a 130,000 subscriber YouTube channel. Uh, I was just watching his channel. He's got like 20K, 30K, 50K views per video, which is pretty much in line with what Tristan gets, for example. So I find it incredibly difficult to understand why has it been so hard for him to get sponsorship from Microsoft. I'm happy that I got it, and I think this is like the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Uh, what? That's a movie reference. Which one is it? Is it Cas Casablanca? Anyone know? This is the beginning of and a also, beautiful friendship. We are young. Friendship. We all watch those. <laughs> <things>. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, in terms of the 3v3, I agree. I like 3v3s. I like team games. They're awesome. But I still would have hoped that it's 2v2 just because I think in terms of reaching a wider audience, those are the games that I believe are easier to follow. And I base my assumption on the fact that Tristan himself here, the two most famous, the two most watched, most popular videos in uh, Tristan's uh, YouTube channel are actually 2v2s, the World Cup. So maybe a 2v2 in terms of wider reach would have been but, better. But the most viewed video is a 4v4 force nothing game. So like, I mean, <laughs> <Fair> enough. <laughs> I, I, I love the 2v2 World Cup and I, I have amazing memories and I'd love to possibly do an event like that again. But sometimes with YouTube, what's ever at the top there doesn't necessarily mean the quality. It's just the algorithms is sending it people's way, you know? Um, 
No, I, I don't even mean about quality. It's just, it seems to strike a chord yeah, with people. Yeah, that's and true. I believe it's about like, the, I think it's about that balance between still being easy enough to understand and not overwhelm you if you're just a casual who plays from time sure. to time, right? And it's just easier to follow as a caster too. Mm -hmm. I think you're much more likely to cover everything, right? That's fair. Yeah. And, and oh, Viperhead is 2v2 too. Because covering four seasons in 2v2 is easier, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> four seasons is a very special case for us. A very, very special case. I still remember. I think it was the cartographers. Wasn't the last map four seasons? I think it was. And mm -hmm. I remember bringing this up in one of the post-match talk. Uh, so we were playing it with Jordan, of course. And you guys just were not talking because it's just so much shit to yeah, do. Yeah. It just seemed to be playing everywhere. You guys were not communicating. It was pretty impressive to see, actually. Uh, folks, one quibble I do have about this uh, is the inclusion of 1v1s. So they're actually going to be including 1v1s in this tournament. And I find that a little bit questionable because uh, whenever... Okay, so the way this works, by the way, in case you guys don't know is whenever you have a best of five series, like the first point in each series is gonna be a best of three, one v one. So you have a best of three inside a best of five, so to speak, and whoever wins the best of three gets one point. Uh, I, so it's not a huge role, doesn't play a huge role, but I find it questionable because, well, if you're gonna rely on one v ones, then it means individual skill is incredibly important, right? And when you're organizing a team game tournament, you don't want individual skill to be the thing that actually determines everything, right? I agree, I would have loved like, if you're going to do a hybrid approach, I would have loved 3v3 and 2v2 um, because it's still team game aspects and you could have specialists okay. of some kind. So you could maybe have a, a player who's really good on Nomad but wouldn't particularly be good in like 2v2 Arabia style. Um, it, it, it is weird to me to mix the two um, like that. Um, and so I'm a little disappointed by that aspect as well. Um, maybe some of it, you know, uh, I don't know what their motivations are, but maybe some of it is they feel... Uh, 1v1s uh, bring in a, a greater audience, uh, could potentially make the event perform better. Mm. Uh, but also I feel uh, as a creator myself that one thing that keeps an audience is consistency in in things. And so people understand what they're watching. Um, and I think right. it could potentially lead to things being a little confusing uh, or, or overwhelming uh, for such a short event, which is only a couple weeks long. I think it's awesome. Very cool, no? Oh. This is the other. Yeah. Well, this is the other yeah, well, thing. This is the other thing. It's like it's already yeah. a problem with team games to have so many good individual players on the same team. That's already a conversation, <laughs> right? Right. But maybe you know, in a three v three, you have like that specialist boomer, that unique unit dropper, that the other standard player mixed up to throw GL for uh, you know, give them give them a run for their money. But now you got one v ones in there. It's like, oh man. Yeah, but but. Keep in mind, all these maps we're playing are pretty much none of them are what we normally play in one-on-one -on -one tournaments. True. They're all going to be unique, different, so there's a lot of room to prepare in that regard. Are you guys going to send Doubt as the first we'll one to play the one We'll discuss it internally. <laughs> but uh, like, I think it's really cool. Like, you, you might finish your be your best one and then like, you immediately go and check, like, okay, how are my teammates doing, right? Mm -hmm. And there's also like some other teams might be able to grab a point in a 3v3 tournament where they would normally not, right? There might be like a team that has better three players overall, while there's on the other side, maybe they have better two better one-on-one -on -one players. And that might also equalize the, the chances um, to give them a better chance to win the set. Uh, I, I personally right, but that's bad. That's, but that's, that's bad, bad right? because we have tons of one v one events all the time, right? We already yeah. know who's and you want the team to win. Yeah, but you're representing your team. It's still a team game. Like you're representing your team in the set. It's still a team effort to come out of the of, out of that match point, like to have get a point from those matches. It's still a team. You know what would be fun? <laughs> if, if there could be live coaching. Live coaching and we can hear the comms. That would be cool. Because then it's a team effort. That would actually, that would actually nerf GL. Like if, they, if Viper had to speak oh, yes. or Doubt had to speak <laughs> while Viper was playing, like that would actually hurt their chances because they would just be annoyed with the other person. <laughs> One thing that I really want to talk about, and I'm curious about your opinions, uh, people have been t talking about this, that team games tournament don't make any sense anymore these days because just of how powerful Gamer Legion is. And by the way, this 1v1 obviously is a huge boost for Gamer Legion. Who's going to be Viper, Hera, Tato? Uh, <laughs> Who's going <laughs> to... Well, Dad, you fit to choose to send him in. How about we use Tao to even the scale a little bit? That would be a cool rule. Doubt has to play the first game every time. By the way, you're not allowed to repeat in the one of you one, so it's yeah. got to be three different players. Isn't it anyway. simultaneous? If it's consecutive, that's going to be a long set potentially. Oh, you think all the one v ones are happening at the same I time? I hope so. Oof, I didn't. Okay, yes, that's, that's what cool it is. actually. 
if there's oh that's cool yeah then i like it a bit more it's also like, okay i like it a bit more yeah. then doesn't okay, that cool. but doesn't that, doesn't that make it even but that makes it even better for the 1v1 teams though right if it's just one 1v1 then it's like okay maybe my guy maybe viper slips up because he's a father now and tired and i could beat him on the day but it's like okay viper True. slips up because he's tired and then you still got hera and you still got tato on the other side winning that one so i think it's even more landslidey towards 1v1 victories then right what difference does it make whether you play consecutively or simultaneously? I'm saying like if Still it was like if game two was one single 1v1, each team picks yeah. a champion, it is better for the underdogs than to have three simultaneous 1v1s decide a game. I think I agree. If you know the third game is a must win, you send Hera, sorry Viper, you send Hera, the strongest 1v1 player for the last one. And no, we send how doubt. is Hera ever going to lose? If, we, if there's a decider, <laughs> we're sending doubt every time. Well, Trust. you're not going to know if it's a decider or not, if yeah. it, everything's at the same time. But anyway, we'll what I wanted to get at is, yeah, yeah we'll see. We'll see. Time, time uh, consumption wise, it makes sense to play simultaneously. If it's a best I of agree. seven and suddenly like, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's going to be best of fives and best of sevens. And this best of three, one v one is going to be the first game of each series. Oh, or the first three games in that case. Uh, but yeah, what I wanted to get at is actually this whole discussion about mm, there is no point having a team game tournament because GL is just too powerful. Tristan. Oh, we want to have this discussion. Well, well, well yes, you want to have <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, I mean, I, I'm a <laughs> tournament host, right? And and I've considered many ideas and I know other tournament hosts who who already kind of had the the an issue in the past with with hosting events when that was the case. And uh absolutely when Hera joined GL, there were events that got shelved because of it. Um now I think there's really competitive like if you look at 1v1s and then you look at team games. It's, just, uh, it's weird for me to frame this thought. I think there's more upset potential in team games. I think there's a lot of like 2K to 2K2 players who are, that would put them like 150, 100 to 150 in the world maybe. That are really good as a team and, and, and overperform based on their 1v1 ability in team games. So there is that, which is super exciting with team games. But it's, it is a little tough when like, as you remember, um, the used, we did actually have like those two that two team dynamic, the AM versus Tyrant, the AM Team Secret, AM GL, and so then now that Hera's with GL, it it definitely um, it makes it harder to think that there's going to be a new champion, especially if the prize pool's high. If it's a lower prize pool event, that's where you're like, okay, who knows if the investment's going to be there for the big boys? But I think we all know if it's a big event. The best competitors take it all very seriously. The preparation is going to be there for the whole squad. And I mean, I don't think anyone's betting against uh, Viper, Hera, Tato, and Del. The thing for me that never made sense about the critique is that if you're comparing team game tournaments with 1v1 tournaments, is there like more of a competition that, in 1v1s? That's v1s? fair. <laughs> <If> <laughs> that's we, fair. Right? I, it's, I, I, I don't really, never really quite understood the critique. Yeah. If you're having a team game tournament and you're pairing Hera with someone who's not, I, I mean, even if the difference is tiny, but it's still it's still pairing him with someone who's not the number one. Yeah. So that actually opens up more chances for an upset, in my opinion. Uh, how how do you see it, uh, Oregon? Um, multiple ways. I think actually what hurts more than Hero and GL is like rather like Suomi's fall off in quotes, right? But that's the playing less Rubenstock. Not I mean he's playing Nomad only. The Max we don't see very often, right? Back then people forget Suomi was a massively competitive team. The mm -hmm. Chinese team as well. Mm -hmm. They won against Tyrant in 2016 or 17 in China, right? They're the master cl clan showdown. Clan something master showdown, something. Clan master showdown. But yeah, like so people really like they, all the focus has been like Tyrant and AM or GL and AM, right? But there's been super competitive, like four or five teams for a long time. Um, I, I understand why people say, that. okay, Hera now in GL, how can we lose? Which is fair. But then again, Doubt and Hera played the show match. Uh, a couple of weeks or months ago, I think they lost like four zero or four one to uh, to Wii Sports. What? So uh, all right. I mean, Wii Sports will definitely form a good team, right? Form AM. They have a uh, MBL for this. Uh... Oh, is it confirmed? Yeah, MBL is confirmed as their guest player. Cool. So it's going to be Lyria Hart player. MBL for Wii Sports. Strong yeah. team. Strong bro. team. Yeah? Strong uh, team. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Chinese team. Obviously, will be very good. We have Fox now with a lot of Sebastian. up and coming players. Mine Sanity with ACCM now as well. There's so mm -hmm. many teams I would be excited to watch and see how they're doing, right? I agree. Winchester Classic Pro plus Dark. No, Dark is with Fox, right? Winchester Classic Pro plus whoever they team up with. 
There, there's so many good teams with potential to make upsets on tricky maps, which a lot of these maps will be tricky. Yeah. That, yeah, I think, of course, GL will be favorite. There's no question about it. But there's some, there's also Red Bull El Reynado coming up. And the tournament is happening in the preparation stage for El, El Reynado. And we already have okay. three players qualified for El Reynado. Yeah. Me, Tato, Hera. Maybe all four after this weekend. We'll see, right? Are we going to have the same amount of time to prepare for this tournament while we're also trying to prepare for Red Bull? I don't know. I think there's a a lot of chances for other teams as well, and people underestimate how... like The the, the skill gap as well in team games is less than 1-1, right? In 1-1, you can be 200 elo apart and make the other guy look a complete fool. T9 has experienced that a lot. And (laughs) then you have in team (laughs) games, there's like three and four people. The, The skill gap is just a lot less, and there's... A lot, it's a lot harder to just completely outplay someone yeah. in team games because it's sure. a lot about team synergy, team dynamics, and playing together. So I, I think team games are cool, and I'm really happy that we have another one. But I obviously understand as well all the potential po- uh, the pe- positives of doing one one versus team yeah. games, right? There's a lot less work for the admins, for the hosts, and everything. Price pool is also way more stretched thin between teams. Yeah. So we can argue maybe that's also less motivating for teams. But then again, you also have the positives. In team games, there's so many more players that get to show themselves, right? Mm-hmm. T90 will be casting teams, and it's going to be like two, three random guys that people have never heard about, and they'd make like a splash and do like a cool strategy or something. They get to express themselves, and yeah. there's a lot of room for teams to to showcase their skill and strategies, and it's cool, and I think a lot of people will be happy to see it. And as I said, a lot of people get to be involved in the tournament in team games, so mm-hmm. I am all for it. I wish we had more, but again, I understand why it's not as fun to host. How would you guys expect to be the three top players at Fox? So Sebastian for sure. Uh, is it Margagoo next? Mm, I think Mihai's is a lock as well. I mean, depending on the maps, if it's all mm-hmm. open, I think Mihai's a lock. So Mihai, Sebastian, I think Dark and, and Margugu will rotate. The core difference I see, Dark probably better on more closed, more strategic maps, maps where maybe you have to go for like the Fast Imp styles, the Monk styles, uh, Margugu more of the... 17, 18 pop archer builds, uh, you know, micro nerd aggression. So, um, yeah, that's how I see it. And I, I, I agree. I think their team's really good. They're really, really good. Yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing team game tournament. I think people are really underestimating how competitive uh, the things are going to be. In any case, my friends, I wanted to talk about this for a long time. Closed streaming versus open streaming. And I, I got into thinking about this because last episode, and if you said you actually heard the last episode, you know about this, Viper, we were talking about how difficult it is for smaller content creators to actually break through in our scene when you know it's just incredibly difficult just because of all the pitfalls. And when I was talking about that, Orn Lu was someone that I very much had in mind while talking about it. And this is obviously a golden opportunity for him whenever you're able to get $30,000. Uh, it's not all of it, it's not all of it from Microsoft as we just talked about before. The best way, especially for struggling content creators, the best way to maximize the return, you know, to make sure you get the most viewers, get the most donos, you get the most subscriptions, all of those things, is obviously to make the whole thing closed streaming. Obviously, there's the problem in doing that, that if you go for closed streaming, the overall viewership is going to be lower. And that's a very key, important factor for Microsoft. Microsoft looks at, what, what do they call it? Key performance indicators. So they want to know watched hours and peak, average, all of that. So that's going to hurt with Microsoft. But do you guys think it would still be worth the gamble of just going, let me maximize this one tournament, let me maximize for my channel and care about Microsoft later? <laughs> well, well, first off, I think if uh, that is something that is probably agreed upon ahead of time, right? I think if if you were to, like, if I were to make an event closed streaming, that would be a conversation that I would need to have with Microsoft. Uh, I, 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 at least I wouldn't think not to do that because that's the standard from the money they give. Um, I think the, I think Microsoft would, would not be okay with it <laughs> uh, because they want to return on their, on their money, so to speak, right? Uh, on top of, I would definitely create issues for many content creators and they don't want drama either. Um, but I, I think like maybe a happy medium, Nelson, is like, like one day events, three day events, right? Instead of a whole month of a closed streaming event where so many active creators can't participate, uh, which would, cre- again, create massive problems for, for viewers who want to watch their favorite creators. The overall viewership would be down. I think like my suggestion at least would be 
one day, weekend long events, some some like show match type things, which uh, kind of incorporate the things that that people maybe want to see um, as a maybe happy medium. And then you don't need as much. You don't even need Microsoft funds at that point, too. You could have a little dono bar. You could put up nothing yourself and and do the event. And you're you'd be surprised how many like solid players would sign up for for certain settings. So. Um, I maybe skipped past your question a little bit here, but that would at least like be my suggestion as like a realistic medium for creators because they could drive viewership because they're doing something unique. Other creators most likely not going to do to to pay attention to some of these things if it's not a big Microsoft tournament. And you you fit a spot, get your window, and and hopefully build your community a bit. Hmm. Well, I'll answer that, but I want to hear Viper's take first. I think my take is quite cynical. It's yeah, it's just simply not worth it for Microsoft, right? They're not going to give you thirty thousand dollars and then be like, oh yeah, just just uh, do close streaming, so the viewership is like ninety percent less, right? Microsoft has no incentive to do that. Um, so it's like, but you're not, especially now with Neil as a tournament uh, coordinator. Is that what it's called? His role? Like, there's going to be a way more of a, I think, a red thread through the whole tournament scene where everyone kind of are along the same uh, rules or guidelines. And I just don't see, first of all, Ornlu would, if Ornlu was, let's use Ornlu as the example here, if he was to make, have a $30,000 tournament and he announces it, announces it, and it's going to be like, yeah, by the way, it's closed streaming. A lot of the creators would not be happy with it. A lot of viewers would not be happy with it. There's a lot of viewers that would just simply not show up then to watch at all. Obviously. Because they cannot watch their favorite caster. And is that, do you want, is that, yeah, yeah, sure. You would have more viewers on your own channel, but the tournament overall would still be less successful yes, as a whole. But yes, but you need to keep in mind, this is someone who's struggling. They don't know if they can keep streaming the next month or the next two months. If this gives them like, um, uh, this gives them the possibility and then chance to keep streaming. I don't know for half half a year. I I have no clue how much money it's going to come together. I think this might be something they they care about that they are thinking about at least on something they just said there. I'm not sure if Microsoft just goes like, no, you don't get any money from us. I think they go like, if you expect to reach this amount of viewers, if you expect to reach this amount of hours watched, you get this amount of money. From what I understand, that's how it works. And the, they basically match the money that they give you to the uh, to the key performance that they are expecting that you're going to give them. And so if that's the case, I think when you actually get manage to get $30,000, it might be worth it to just maximize for your own channel or maybe find a happy medium. I don't know. But wouldn't that's, you, uh, wouldn't uh, the next time you go knocking on Microsoft's door to get money, they look at the performance of your tournament and they say, oh, no, you don't get anything now? Wouldn't that like yes, completely cut maybe. off your... Maybe, but imagine okay. the tournament is a success and you grow as a streamer. Next time, you can give them a higher viewership they were expecting to reach. This I'm oversimplifying for sure. Sure, but sure. no, your position is going to be a bit stronger next time you try to get money. It's just not realistic in Age of Empires. Yeah, you know, the channel is not going to grow overnight because you're hosting a tournament to the point where you're suddenly up there, right? I think it's tournament like Age of Empires is a lot of people fall into their year, positions though. by luck. Well, yes. right. I'm a top player, I'm a top content creator, by luck. I didn't start my playing Age of Empires aiming for this. It just happened by default. T90 started casting, he didn't start casting thinking, oh, he's going to be uh, traveling to Spain to cast in castles, right? It just happened. And that's the, the ecosystem in Age of Empires. I don't think there is, it's unrealistic and very, very few people, this might be harsh, right? But I think it's extremely few people are going to be able to set out with a goal, a dedicated goal, and achieve it, if that makes sense, right? Sebastian is a is one of the shining examples recently, where it's like, okay, he has really put the time and dedication now to try and become really good, and he has accomplished it. But he's the exception; he's not the norm. And especially in streaming as well, where the audience is already so uh, saturated by a lot of streamers, right? It's hard for them to switch their favorite streamer just like that as well, right? Also, these these people you're talking about have also hosted tournaments and been streaming for years already. It's unlikely that they, them doing a closed streaming event is suddenly going to spike their channel to the point where, oh, it is now suddenly sustainable. It will help, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think there's an ecosystem in Age of Empires where this makes sense. And again, I'm a very aware that this is cynical and harsh, but I, I, think, I think it's, it's important it's, to be realistic. Yeah. Another side note to that too, Nelson, is like if I, if I get viewers because I tell Viper he can't stream on that day, right? 
does that mean that when Viper's back streaming when I'm streaming, that Viper's biggest fans are just going to stay on me now just because they watch for that one event? No, no they you, won't. They won't. They're going to go, you know, sure. so you, you do get maybe a percentage of them get to see you and be exposed to you. Um, right. But I feel there's also a, a means if that's what you want, if you want more eyeballs on you, collaborating with someone who is streaming, who has five, seven times your viewership, so they could hear you, know about you, and maybe search for you. That might even be a better overall avenue to, to expand viewership without like, like, let's face it, it would be massive drama in the community if a Microsoft, like you are, you, you love to stir up crap with your comments. <laughs> because it was like, we're going back to like 2017 drama in my brain right, right We've now. We've been through this. And it would, be, this. it would be a big, a big, big, big thing, um, which, which no one wants. So but, but here's um, the fig, bro. Here, can I just add quickly one more time? Uh, it's like the opportunity to host a tournament, you still get advantages in terms of you can dictate certain parts of like, okay, the title for every streamer is going to be hosted by name. And then that will be like exclamation mark name and there will be a link. That That's your exposure reward, if that makes sense. And keep in mind that the money that you're hosting a tournament with is not your own money most of the time as well. Yeah. So it's like you still get to benefit despite not investing. I mean, you're investing your time, which is also right. <laughs> A lot, a lot of time is invested, so it's not to diminish the, the efforts. Um, but that's where you should try to differentiate yourself, right? Memb is doing a good job with that, right? With the Warlords and King of the Desert, where he's like, okay, player cameras will be on his channel, right? And people that want to watch the players react. I mean, because everyone is but super again, if you're active reacting. 50K, it's, I, I don't want to say it's easy to do that, but it gives you the opportunity to do all of those things when you get 50K, you know? So one thing I, I want to say, because I wonder if these things are actually worth it for someone like Wernlu. How many channels do you think are going to have more viewership than him in this tournament in the final? If Tristan streams for sure, Tristan. Probably Dave, probably Mendo. Does that matter? I think it does, because you're widening the gap between you. Let, let's be real. This is a competition between streamers. Let's be real. Uh, we're competing for viewers. There is a limited amount of viewers. You're, let me finish. I'll let you respond. Let me finish. <laughs> you're widening the gap between you and the big content creators. Because you're having all the work, and it's a lot of work. You guys have organized tournaments before. You know how much work this is. And there are still are getting more viewers, more subscriptions. So you're widening the gap, actually. You're actually making it worse for you. You're getting a bit more for yourself, but the others are getting more than you are. And so I wonder, I wonder if we shouldn't try to find ways to guarantee a bit a bit fairer distribution of the funds. This sounds so socialist. And people, Americans are going to hate it. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Should we maybe go back to broadcasting fees and make it a fair price? Maybe just I oh just my want God. I just want to yeah. Look at this. Listen. Look at this. Look at it. Let me finish. Okay, I'll, I'll finish. I'm you you about don't to even be know half of it, dude. I don't even dive I, into I, that. I swear, I'm about to be finished. Open streaming favors the top guys massively. Whether it's your yes. tournament, whether it's another guy's tournament, you're gonna get the viewership. If you're a small small content creators, you put all this work, and the top guys are still gonna get the most. This doesn't happen anywhere else as far as I'm concerned. What if, and now you can respond, well, whoever liked this, but what if you go back to broadcasting feeds, but make it small, but make it not too much, not too high, so that it scares away the big content creators? What would you have against it? Why would you want... What's the motivate? The, the, the motivation, motivation is, the motivation is viewers or money? Because because It's both. Things... It's both, Tristan, because these guys are struggling to keep uh, to keep streaming. These guys are wondering every month, can I still stream next year? Can I still stream in two months? I, I don't know if, like, I don't, I, I, you know, that's also, I don't know. If you get an injection of, I don't know, like 800 bucks or whatever. If you're someone like Mihai, for example, just an example, because I, I think he said he needs like two to 300 bucks a month. That's mm -hmm. suddenly four months that he can justify to continue streaming. I think, like, can you not, uh, you know, an interesting thought, instead of like just rippling the whole competitive scene, right? is go to Microsoft with your pitch, say, this is what my event is, this is what my cost is, right? This is a percentage of that that I would like for the work to run time. So you could give the full breakdown and you could factor in an extra thousand or 2000 if money is a really big factor to do that. Now, it's typically, not the only factor. Correct, correct. Now, typically though, uh, everyone's going like right up, like they're spending every penny on everyone but themselves, right? Um, and in, in some cases they go beyond that with their costs because, uh, that's people are really appreciative of the funds of Microsoft, but, but I don't think it is like if Microsoft were to set a standard, right. And it was like 5% or, or 
seven or 10% of like the total amount we give a creator, that goes towards the creator. And then we also have a separate percentage set aside for costs, whatever that may be. I think that'd be really good as a whole because it gives money before all the other stuff aside, it gives money to the creators. Um, but it still doesn't solve the other problem of viewers, of course, which is a big part of, of what you're bringing up here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the, I think that's a good idea, by the way, that uh, like if you negotiate your tournament price pool and such with Microsoft, that you can also ask for a little bit of like a, a yeah. hoster's fee, you know? Yeah. yeah. Why not? I think that's completely reasonable. Um, but again, we don't know how much price pool here is Microsoft in this tournament, yeah. but also like you're talking about widening the gap. It's like, why look at everyone else? If your tournament, if you're hosting average 100 viewers and okay, you're hosting a tournament now, sure, T90 gets 5,000 viewers, but I still got 500 viewers, which is five times the viewers right. I get normally. The thing yeah. is, the thing is, the trickle down viewership is a myth, in my opinion. <laughs> so this whole idea that we have that when uh, T90 come back and when Viper come back to Twitch, all those new viewers are going to start trickling down to other channels. That's a myth, I believe. And Orlando has spoken to this. At the end of the day, when you have big viewership in the three top channels, that's what everybody who suddenly watches Age of Empires 2 is going to go to. Nobody's going to go to the fifth channel. Nobody's going to go to the fourth channel, probably. You, you yeah. see what I'm talking about? But so why that's is why viewership myth, is important. That is, it's that a is myth the, because people like certain types of creators, certain personalities, and certain things. No, no. The myth you can't part... can't change what people watch at no, the end of the day, No, obviously, right? obviously, Tristan. The myth yeah. part is that people are expecting or hoping that all those viewers, all those new viewers that are supposedly going to come to Twitch now because Tristan and uh, Viper are back, those viewers are going to start watching all the other content creators just because they are now come to Twitch. I think that's a myth. I think you have no. your viewers that are going to watch you. I think Viper has got his viewers that are going to watch him. That's what I think. And no. I believe Orin Lewis spoken to this as well. I don't, I don't think agree. that was ever the case where it's like, oh, everyone's expecting a big trickle, right? Yeah. But I think that's like, a big the, the, thing why we were so happy that you guys are back. It's one of the big things. Um, but the way we can help in that regard is by hosting and spreading our viewers, right? And it of course, little. it helps little, but it helps, right? Yeah, yeah. It's better than nothing. And it's like, but again, that's where it comes down to the like extremely cynical and harsh view. That's just how it is. That's the ecosystem. There is no incentive for anyone to change anything about that, right? And the change, for, like the only way closed tournaments make sense or is allowed or accepted is if Microsoft forces it through. I, can, I can't, cannot imagine the amount of backlash you would get if you get funds from Microsoft and do a closed tournament. Everyone else would be like, he's getting money from Microsoft and he's using a closed tournament, right? This is not even his own money. That's the view people are going to have. And that's yeah. going to be such yeah. a backlash negative, negatively on that person who is hosting that tournament. Again, I think the happy medium here though, right? Like the happy medium. And by the way, I, I disagree. I think there are many people who subscribe to, who no longer subscribe to me or subscribe to Viper who are watching other content creators around the scene that came in initially from a video, from a stream, it happens from the bottom up too. Now, it's never going to be the exact amount. It's never going to be like 100% of this person's viewers just move to you know someone else. But um, there is a trickle. Now, how big the trickle is, is, is a, maybe the issue. But like all this stuff is a big mess, right? It's a big mess. Uh, there were times where Microsoft supported uh, events. People charged fees based on subscriptions on channels. Right. There were there's a whole bunch of stuff and in the weeds that, yeah, that we probably don't want to get into. Um and I go back to my original comment here. Like like I think it, it costs so little compared to an event, so little time compared to an event. Picking a time slot where other streamers maybe aren't all online is something more streamers have to do. A big thing with streamers that are trying to to compete in the space is they're all streaming the exact same sets that 15 other people are casting that are going to get more viewers than them. Be creative with time slots, come up with some cool things, get feedback from your community and try and build there from and it's way less like time and like and whatnot. Um, it doesn't guarantee thousands and thousands of viewers, but I think it's a realistic way to separate yourself from others and build a little bit of a foundation and community instead of like, again, do casting the same thing with your quote unquote competition who, uh, where, you know, barring rule changes, you're not going to be able to, to touch all that much. Okay. To finish the whole thing off. And I appreciate the passionate discussion. I would just want to <laughs> just want to guys let you know. So I obviously want to have these crazy ideas. I like to talk to people who know more than me. So sure. I talked to our friend, Will. Uh, so here's what I asked him. I can't quote the whole conversation, but he did allow me to quote this. And I'm not quoting all that much. 
So, uh, what did I say to him? If I were a strugg if I was a struggling content creator, wouldn't it be wise for me to make my tournament closed streaming? As then I know I'm maximizing the return on my channel, even knowing viewership will be lower and I'll probably get less money next time. So that's basically what I asked you guys. Will's response, probably. And I rest my case. <laughs> I rest my case. So probably. It's not a crazy idea. That's what I'm trying to say here. Now, to be fair, I don't think Will uh, is actually in the business of, um, of reviewing tournaments and all those things. I think it's all nilly now, but uh, just, just uh, I don't think it's uh, a crazy I, idea. I don't think it's a completely out of this world idea. That's, that's, that's all I want to say, because I know people are going to shit on me because I'm disagreeing with Viper and, and T90, but that's no, fair. No, no, no. I, think, I think your take is also completely reasonable, right? Well, thank you. Think, thank you, Viper. Like, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, that works. That is an option, but I just don't think in Age of Empires there is a like a system where that works. I think as we just have to be brutally honest. That's I think it's a gamble. It's just it's just it's not a gamble. It's just extremely unrealistic, and it's just not going to bring benefits in the long run either. Mm -hmm. I think if money is the problem and the incentive, then I think what T9 is suggested earlier: negotiate a a fee for running the tournament. I'm sure you can easily negotiate, like yep. let's say, five hundred bucks. For hosting a tournament, a thousand dollars maybe even. But of course, you also want to have money to pay the admins or whatever who's yeah. also doing the work alongside you. But yeah, that should be part of the negotiation when you're trying to ask for funds mm -hmm. from Microsoft. That's a start for so, sure. My worry yeah, there would yeah. be that it's still the viewership gap is being widening. But I don't want to go I, back. I already as I, like a final thing on this. Like I mm -hmm. really think now, I'm I recognize that I'm saying this from a position of privilege, right? Because I yeah. I am one of the individuals I didn't that has to say a lot it, of but <laughs> but uh, but like I think just. It's a very dangerous cycle if you if you focus so much on viewership of others and what others have done in comparison to yourself, not just in streaming, just in anything. And I think you can, um, I, I think in streaming especially, I think that's uh, that's kind of dangerous. I think uh, a lot of it's small steps, right? No one builds up their community in a day or a week or a month or even a year. So if you can get a two, three times the viewers you typically get. Obviously, I think considering how many viewers are out there, you're going to maybe want more, right? If you are if you go from 100 to 400 or 200 to 800. But um, I think that's still, that's still something that you could be excited about. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, again, I recognize that I am saying this from my position, right? Uh, but I remember those, those days where like if Viper was online, I'd get no one. Like I'd have 60 people and Viper would have like 850. And I remember being like, well, I can't compare myself to, to this guy. I just got to focus on my own thing and try and innovate where I can. And um, again, Viper's right. We just we we all just got extremely lucky and, and in combination with hard work. But yeah, that's kind of probably my final take on that. <laughs> all right. I would never, ever recommend anyone to start out today and think I'm going to become a full-time Age of Empires streamer, full-time Age of Empires cast A lot of people do, though, still. Maybe that's a mistake. Yeah, I mean, it, it's but don't do it as the be-all, end-all. Do it as a side thing, and eventually maybe you accidentally mm -hmm. stumble into some success and like, maybe become a great player that people want to watch. Maybe you find a fun gimmick, side gimmick that people are interested in. Like, look at the Grath Run, for example, right? Whenever I rate him, boom, 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 the channel, like it's exploding <laughs> the screen. Like, and some people like that, right? And he has his audience that likes that. And mm -hmm. that's like, he's, he's doing something that sets himself apart from everyone else streaming Age of Empires. And that's what you kind of have to do if you want to try and make it in today's. Because I, th I think that, how to say, that the basic audience is accounted for. Like the, 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 the saturation of the, the people that just want to watch the basic Age of Empires gameplay is already like, taken by great casters, great players, and it's really hard to break into that unless you're amongst those, right? If you are a fantastic caster, if you are an amazing player, that's kind of where you have to, to get those viewerships, right? And that, that takes a long time to get. If, if anyone wants to get there, they, it's going to be years and years of work. And by the time they get there, maybe Age of Empires is not what it once was. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a hard, hard, it's just how the Age of Empires ecosystem is. And I, like I said, there's no incentive for the guys up top to change. There's no incentive for Microsoft to change anything. And that's the problem as well, where it's like, how does it, it's just, it is what it is, right? <laughs> I don't think there's a way of changing too much. All right. Uh, I still had so much to say, but I'll leave it at we'll, 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 a whole podcast. I, I'm going to swallow a huge, uh, I, I want to say that I, I wish we had 
for example, owned on the podcast during this conversation or someone of that ilk, right? Where they are like the 100 viewership ish. And maybe we can arrange that in the future maybe and expand can. more uh, on this. September is. Because you seem to want to talk more about yes, it. Yes, uh, September is pretty full. So we'll, we'll see about it. Uh, okay, my friends, uh, just to finish the whole thing, I still want to talk about the Right to Side Rumble. Uh, so if friends, if people can't wait until September to watch the whole World Desert 2, there's a good way to satisfy your Age of Empires 2 addiction because once more there's the Regicide Rumble coming, which has now been announced by our friend Tristan over here. So yeah, uh, talk about it, bruv. Uh, what is it about? Where are the dates? Uh, I thought about actually looking up this info, but since you're here anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, so it's the 21st through 25th, so it's coming coming in a week pretty much from upload. Uh, and it's uh, the 5th edition, but I mean, it's been two years, I think, since the 4th, and it's been way too long, so I mean... Basically, uh, regicide diplomacy settings. You can ally or enemy anyone, ally or enemy anyone at any time. Uh, we're putting money on each king's head. So if you kill a king, you get twenty five bucks, and then if you're top three, you get placement prizes as well. So it's that you got to be like, how much do I like my teammate right now? Because his king <laughs> is vulnerable, you know. Um, and the thing we're changing this time is we're doing the winner of the eight games that we do for over four days goes to a final as well. So we'll have eight winners of eight separate games, and then those players will all go into uh, a final against each other. And that'll be a mix of the community players, like the community day and the pro day, which, oh my God, I'm so excited for because that <laughs> let, let me tell you, the pros don't know what's coming, dude. The pros don't know what's coming. There's so many fun examples I can remember uh, in the past. So yeah, I'm really excited. You got to send up for you? Uh, I'm going to have to see. Uh, it's Like right now, I live day by day, right? So it's a bit tricky to commit, but I'm going to check it out and see if uh, if it's it works out. I mean, I played it before. It's really fun. <laughs> Do you remember? Some, uh, could you yeah, could you bring uh, up uh, what happened the last time you played it? Oh, I don't remember exactly, but I remember there was he a lost. lot of uh, betrayal. And uh, I remember it was a water map where we had to like uh, land on the left side of the island. I think I was next to Yo or something. And... Uh, I think I was Mongols. I don't know. I don't think I remember the exact details. If you do, <laughs> I, like like Tristan. Every yeah, detail. Like Tristan yeah. I remember <laughs> every detail. Yeah. So what happened was it was you, Yo, and Doubt. So it was yeah. like the, the top five guys, right? On one side of Pilgrims. And then I think it was like Stark. I think Stefan, if you remember Stefan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and and one other player. Was it Manchester? I think he died very early in that game, but I think okay, he might okay, have signed maybe. up. But anyways, you kind of had the... It were all top players, obviously, but it was like the big three, Yo, Doubt, and Viper. Problem was, you guys didn't trust each other for a second. It was so funny. <laughs> so Yo got killed off, I forget how, but then at one point, like the whole narrative was, can Viper and Doubt stay together and beat these other three? And you had the resources and everything, but you or Doubt had siege monitors next to the castle where the other's king was. There was signaling, like, what is this? And there was just a whole bunch of distrust, and you guys just fell apart and killed each other. It was so funny. <laughs> I <laughs> really Game of Thrones. It was good. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I could, I honestly, I love this type of thing so much. It's so cool um, to see because um, people's experiences and how they played against people on ladder over years, uh, they're bickering back and forth over maps, like all that stuff plays a role in one game. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's just going to be it's going to be really cool to see a mix. I hope for good games. I expect it to be extremely campy with the amount of money on the line. Um, but sometimes in games, it's like if someone starts to build one too many castles and camp too much, then they get called out, too. So yeah, it should be should be good fun. How much is it? What's the prize pool for this? Uh, total prize pools close to 5K. It does depend on how many kings actually get sniped because it's twenty five dollars per king. Um, but it's, uh, community days, a hundred for first, 75 second, 53rd, and then pro days are like, it's like two, don't quote me on this. I actually don't have it memorized. Oh, okay. I think it's like I'll ask the host of the tournament then next time. Or 200 for first, like 125 for second and like a hundred third, something like that. So, um, yeah. And then. Yeah, 10 total games with similar prize pool splits. So. Mm -hmm. uh, to finish the whole thing, uh, one thing I want to ask you, Tristan, as someone who's watched your career from the very beginning, it's pretty clear to me that I've been watching, you've been streaming fewer hours. Uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty clear to me. So I wonder, is this a conscious decision? Did it just happen? Do you intend for the, in the near future that you just, you make more events and stream fewer hours altogether? Is this something that I just decided to do? Is this something that just happened? Um, I just 
kind of became okay with not streaming as much if something came up because I felt like through so much of my life, uh, first off, I didn't like have anything outside of my house to ever do ever. <laughs> or uh and if i did i would just like straight up just not do it uh it, it was it was really bad and unhealthy so you know uh friend calls me up for weekends i haven't seen in two years i say yes now you know instead of no uh unless a really big event is happening but yeah uh more to your point i am going to be a little bit more i'm trying to be more selective with my youtube content so when people see a video they know it's special and it's not just an export from a random stream i did on a wednesday because mm -hmm. i had nothing to do <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to have like spurts of streams where um, an event, do an event. Things are a little bit more sporadic, have another big event. Um, and I think that'll actually lead to me doing more events. And, and yet streaming like maybe a little less overall if you average it out. So um, it was not by design, but I have been more relaxed and I think my content's better for it. So. All right, cool. Guys, this was fun, man. I enjoy this a lot. Let's let Wait, we have to say, Tristan, thanks a lot for stepping in while I was gone. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to give me the yeah. boot now, huh? That's all good. I didn't enjoy <laughs> yeah. it here anyways. <laughs> we'll let you be one more time just for good measure. But uh, it's time to go. Time to go. Yeah, it's all right. I kept the tea <laughs> warm for you, dude. And yeah. uh, all jokes aside, I'm happy. I'm happy I could fill in. Thanks for the invite. And uh, I I'm happy everything's going well with, with your kid, Viper. And I'll be Thank listening you. in in future episodes, of course. I'm sure you'll visit again at some point. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of those things. This was fun. I enjoyed it, guys. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.